The more I chat with people who have gone through or are going through similar life experiences as I have in regards to gender, the more validated it feels to be exploring this part of my identity. I said earlier that this entire project has effectively felt like a big, queer pressure cooker. All of these conversations I've gotten to experience and all of the stories that everyone has been so generous in sharing has been packing more flavor into the stew than I ever could have hoped to achieve on my own. I'm thinking about it now and I'm, I'm not sure that people make stews in a pressure cooker. I'm not much of a chef, but I still like the metaphor. Although I will admit lately in regards to my own self-discovery, I've felt a bit more like a snowball. Not one that has been recklessly pushed down a hill and is gaining uncontrollable speed until eventually colliding with a parked car in a spectacular, destructive fashion, but more one that is being carefully and methodically built up in the middle of a vast field. Friends and loved ones who offer advice and support are those who come along and help push for a while and offer a shoulder to rest on when necessary. Mean words from people who would rather see someone fail than to become their most authentic self are twigs and acorns and gross pea snow. The gross pea snow is easily scraped out of our big beautiful snowball and the twigs and acorns will be covered up as more progress is made and ultimately will result in a stronger snowball in the end. I'm not sure if this metaphor is landing either, I'm just glad that I have enough confidence in myself, my friends, my family, my snowsuit, my mitts, and my pea snow scrape and shovel to build this snowball at all. This is episode four of Gender. I hardly know them. This episode, I had the opportunity to sit down with Lynn Markham. Lynn identifies as female and uses she, her pronouns. I wouldn't say it was always something I knew. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, especially like as a teenager and things like that, I always felt like there was something wrong. Like there was something wrong with me. I would ask my question. I would ask myself that question lots. I would also ask like my friends and partners and stuff, but obviously I'm not asking the right question to the right person. Um, so it kind of just, I wouldn't say it came out of the blue, but um, I always knew that I had more feminine traits and I kind of always thought of it more like a scale and I'm like, I think I'm more on the, feminine masculine side than I was on the masculine side. I identified more with females. Um, when I looked at females, it wasn't in a way of attraction. It was in a way of studying and learning and observing, right? I wanted to be like them. Okay. So I wanted like, even like my girlfriends and stuff in the past, like I always just kind of watched how they did things, watched how they sat and they talked, and I just, I admired more than anything. So ultimately, that kind of just, I don't know, like it's not something that I consciously thought of. Like I didn't put all the pieces together until after I started therapy. So in therapy, that would probably be the egg crack moment. And I can't really like be like, that was it. It was more like um, over several months of therapy and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, like this is what I'm thinking. And I'm like, maybe I am trans. And it kind of just, kind of clicked like all the pieces just literally just snapped together at that point and then I'm like yeah that's it I'm trans and then that was like in between um, therapy appointments so then next therapy class I go and I'm like okay 
so yeah, I'm, I'm trans. That's, that's what it is. And then now it was like, okay, well now what, right? So it's one thing to admit it to yourself. It's another thing to admit it to a therapist let alone a doctor, let alone friends, family, socially, right? Yeah. So yeah. It's n not, that is probably the, the egg crack moment, but that's also when the journey starts. I ended up coming out to my sister and my brother-in-law first. Those were the first people I came out to. And it was, it was easy. I mean, it was hard. It yeah. was really difficult. <laughs> But once I actually did, um, I had their love and support, which was amazing. And I think something inside of me always knew that I, they would, even though it's terrifying. Totally. Right? Yeah. Gender and sexuality is very fluid, mm. right? So I know people, especially more youth, um, who come out and be like, I'm bi or um, I'm a lesbian or something like that. But then as they learn and explore, things change. Be like, okay, well, no, I'm not lesbian. I'm bisexual or yeah. I'm not bisexual. I'm pansexual, right? Mm -hmm. So if you've already come out to your parents and be like, yeah, I'm a lesbian. Like, now you have to come out again to your parents and be like, oh, actually I'm bi. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So, and that is also another hurdle and mm -hmm. it's a hard conversation. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, on that note, okay. I saw a TED talk and it was all about, um, I wish I could remember the name, but I can't. It was a human, I think their pronouns are they, them. So anyways, they were talking about hard conversations mm. and they literally said like coming out to people is just a hard conversation, but everyone has hard conversations, whether you're straight, gay, biracial, like it doesn't matter. They're all hard conversations. Mm -hmm. Like if you're going to get a divorce and you have to tell your partner and be like, I want a divorce, yeah. that's a hard conversation. <laughs> yeah. So how is that any different than coming out to someone? Mm, yeah. It's just a hard conversation, Yeah. ultimately. Uh -huh. yeah. So, and to me, that really kind of spoke to me in a sense of like, yeah, the hard conversations are valuable conversations that need to happen mm -hmm. with every relationship in your life. Yeah. At any given point, mm -hmm. anyone can come to you with a hard conversation. Yeah, yeah. Or you can have to or you have to go to someone for a hard conversation. Yeah. It can be as little as quitting your job. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or getting fired. Mm -hmm. Right? Put yourself in the employer shoes, right? Yeah, yeah. Like that's a hard conversation. Yeah. Right? Like you know this person, you know they have a family and like mm -hmm. but you need to let them go. Yeah. That's a hard conversation. Yeah. So if you sat down and was to tell your parents or friends or anyone, be like, mm -hmm. hey I'm trans. Hard conversation. It's also interesting hearing you say like talk about um how like, you know, you might come out as uh, a lesbian to your, your parents and then that might evolve because um, mm -hmm. I know personally for me that's I struggle with like the label side of things a lot because um, I feel like there's like a permanency there when there probably isn't it's just my own perception of it right because like it is this fluid thing and I think also like being able to take in new information and grow from that is a good trait, right? Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, a part of me, I guess, is punishing myself for like, for doing that and, and making it like this extra hurdle I need to, to get over. But I do worry about, I guess, like the permanency of labels sometimes um, when having those hard conversations with people and having to sit them down again and be like, hey, I learned more about myself. <laughs> right. It's a little different than it was before. I mean, labels are labels. Mm. A lot of people take labels very serious and literal mm -hmm. when ultimately it's not. I mean, think of a kitchen, for example. 
you put all your spices in jars, you put labels on them. Yeah. But what happens if you get a new spice and you don't have one's like half empty? You're like, okay, well, I'm just going to use this bottle. I'll change the label. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Logically, that yeah. makes sense, right? Why Absolutely go buy a new does. container when I don't need one because this one's already empty? I'm yeah. just going to change the label. Yeah. So if it's no big deal to change a the label there, how I label myself, how is that? Like, I can change that anytime I want. Yeah. Not to mention, labels are not for me. They're for everyone else. Right. So when I label myself as a trans person, mm -hmm. that's not because I don't know I'm trans. That's because no one else does. And when I say I'm trans... Now everyone else knows that. Right. So I, ha I hold that label for everyone else to have an idea of who I am. I mean, I remember the first time someone called me queer and, and it wasn't in like a, you know, <laughs> it wasn't like an attack. It was someone just offhanded referred to me as queer. And I was like, huh, all right. And it was like something just happened. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. makes sense. That totally kind of fits. Uh, yeah, and and then like that. I, honestly, that was like everything kind of went from there. Um, but like, I do I do generally find that I I tend towards like the more broad terms, and I don't know if that's whether or not like I just haven't narrowed it down yet, or if I'm just happier being a little vague. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, that can go back to the whole situation of labels are for other people. Right. Right? Yeah. So if you're vague in your labels, yeah. That's almost like a sense of pride of holding part of yourself private. Interesting, yeah. Right? Yeah. If you have all your labels listed literally like a name tag. Right. You can walk down the street and people are gonna know you. Yeah. Right? No different than a Facebook profile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, where you went to school, who your, your friends your are, who your yeah, your status, are yeah. you married or not married, like yeah, yeah, right, yeah. But if you're vague in all of that, uh -huh. now everyone's kind of like, I wonder, yeah, right. So it has a mysterious feel to it, or right, it's very much like you are just trying to keep that to your loved ones and the people closest to you. Totally, right. Yeah. It could be a privacy thing. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. One other thing that I wanted to point out too mm. is um, there's a saying, and I heard it from that one girl, Age Mary Brown, that I was telling you about. Mm. Um, you do better when you know better. So as you learn and grow, mm -hmm. you learn new things. Mm -hmm. But once you learn new things, now you learn to be like, wait a minute. Maybe that's not the right way to say this. Maybe that's not the right way to act. Yeah. So then you change that. And then in the future, you don't act that way. You don't say those type of things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Say, like, whether that's labels or, um, you know, the whole politically correct. Be like, oh, you can't say that now. Mm. Be like, I mean, of course you can say it now. Free speech. But yeah. at the same time, the people who fall into that category have spoken up and said, I don't want to be called that. Yeah, yeah. So now you know, mm -hmm. so you know better. Yeah, yeah. Your job is to do better. I feel like, yeah, like one of the things that people struggle with, um, with like learning new things sometimes, so especially if it's about like say a community they're not knowledgeable about or mm -hmm. a part of themselves, is people take that new information as this person saying I'm not a good person, you know? Mm. Like, say mm -hmm. you're using, like, language you shouldn't be using, and you just didn't know better, right? Like, it's perfectly okay for someone to be like, hey, like, that's, that's like, an ableist term. We don't use that anymore. Like, and you're like, oh, yeah, okay. I, I won't. But right. I feel like a lot of people's reactions to stuff like that is like, well, I'm not ableist. And it's like, okay, like, I'm not saying you are. Just it, what you do with this information will determine if you are or not. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, yeah. And I, I feel, um, I don't want to generalize, I hate generalizing, but 
I feel people in that situation too also kind of feel like it's an attack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember there's certain people in my life who have said to me like, well, especially early coming out stage, explaining like cisgender and transgender and things like that. Right. And the second I was like, well, you're cisgender and be like, don't label me. And I'm like, don't label me. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. and they were all offended because I called them cisgender. And I'm yeah. like, I don't think you understand. Like, this is not something that I'm labeling you as. You've always been this. Yeah. It's a medical term. Yeah. Like, it's not anything against you. No, it's not, it's not a negative term. Exactly. And also, like, I, I just didn't, I couldn't understand why they were offended by it. Yeah, it's just language you didn't have in your vocabulary before. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's nothing, it's mm -hmm. not pushing like a, a political s s standpoint on you or anything. It's just the scientific mm. term, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And sometimes there just isn't words for what you're experiencing. Yeah. Right? Yeah, totally. And that can go with anything. Yeah. Like a loved one dies. You don't have the words to explain the emotions you're going through. Mm -hmm. But when you find those words, now you can express those words. Yeah. It's not like those words don't exist. They mm. just might not be known to you. So I live my life very out loud and proud. Yeah. Um, so I would kind of say that anywhere and everywhere is it for me because I make it that way. I feel a lot of it's kind of attitude as well, okay. right? I'm no different than anyone else. So whether I'm at a grocery store or business or even just walking down the street, mm -hmm. I belong there just as much as anyone else does. Yeah. I don't necessarily seek out exacting affirming places. Mm -hmm. Not anymore, anyways. Definitely okay. early on in my transition, I, I needed that. I needed yeah, that yeah. support right. from my fellow trans folks and mm -hmm. queer folks, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I definitely needed that. And... To have places where those exist mm -hmm. are very important. We need those, mm -hmm. especially for the youth. And I mean, I may just be a certain breed where I am, I live my life loud and proud, right? Not yeah. everyone has that ability, right? Um, whether it's safety, mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's lots of different things that can hold people back, right? Totally. Um, and early on in my transition, they definitely held me back too. Yeah. Right? I, I struggled a lot with things like that. And <clears throat> I needed those queer spaces so I could feel welcome and so I knew that I wasn't alone. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's one thing that I try, especially with a lot of my work within the community, mm -hmm. is to make it known that you're not alone. And to normalize a lot of it, yeah, right? Just totally. like the whole thing with the hard conversations, Yeah. right? Yeah. It's a normal thing. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you're queer, trans, or cis and straight. Mm -hmm. They're all, we all seek the same things. Mm -hmm. It just looks a little bit different, maybe a little bit more colorful for the queer people, <laughs> but that's it. Yeah. Ultimately, that's it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We just want to hold space and be respected in that space. Vulnerability is definitely something that I hold close and express it a lot as well. Now, I don't express it in a way to try and get sympathy because that's not, that's not the goal and that's not why I do it in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. um, being a minority, it's kind of the only card I have, mm. right? Yeah. How else will people hear me Yeah. if I don't speak to my vulnerabilities? Right. Right? So if yeah. I put myself in vulnerable situations, now, I don't mean physical vulnerable situations, um, definitely not dangerous situations, mm. but like public speaking or just... even being very personal with people, mm. right? Um, 
I've been told lots, and there's lots of other people in my life that, hmm, I'm probably not going to explain it very well, but you know how people say, like, oh, like, you have, like, a resty face, right? <laughs> so there's the opposite of that, right? If someone has okay. a resty face, mm. that just might mean they're in a bad mood, mm -hmm. right? Right. I get that. I definitely show my emotions on my face, okay. on my body language. Everyone mm. does. Yeah, yeah. No, not everyone has the ability to pick up on those and feel those and see those. Mm -hmm. For me, instead of it being like a resting face, when people are trying to talk to me, they're just like, oh, okay, like someone's in a bad mood. I don't want to talk to that person, right? Yeah. That's more or less resting face. Yeah. I have more of um, people, like random people, like I could be at the grocery store and there could be some random person who would just be like, starts talking to me and starts telling me their entire life story. Right? So I have more of a face of come talk to me face. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm a safe, open person to talk to. Yeah. Right? Yeah, there's yeah. other people in my life that definitely have that as well. Yeah. And. I've heard it a lot and people say to me like, oh, you should be a therapist. You're really easy to talk to, mm. good listener. And I'm like, right. So that's also very much part of my vulnerability, right? Okay, yeah, so yeah. when those people come up to me and start telling me things, yeah. I mean, for one, I wish they would ask consent. That's because sometimes I'm definitely not in the space to hear oh, totally. other yeah. people's life stories and yeah. hardships and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that would be awesome if that was a very socially cultural thing that would be happening all the time. Yeah. Um, regardless of that, I have the option to be vulnerable back, right? Mm -hmm. They're obviously being vulnerable to me, complete yeah, yeah, stranger. Yeah. Yeah. And I have the vulnerability to be back by sharing some of my own struggles and my right. personal experiences, mm -hmm. whether it's advice, whether Maybe they're not even looking for advice. They just need someone to listen. Totally. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so you, you would be like resting empath face. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Like, I, exactly. I, I resting empath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, vulnerability. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's a power that everyone has. Yeah. Everyone has the ability to use it. Right. And it takes many different shapes, many different forms, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's you telling your life story to someone, um, whether it's on a camera, whether it's on news, mm -hmm. doesn't have to be. It could even be online. Yeah. Right? Totally. Yeah. Posting a photo of yourself to Instagram yeah. is being vulnerable. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Posting a photo of anything it doesn't have to be a photo. Yeah. It could be a picture of your artwork. It could be mm -hmm. a picture of the project you're working on. Totally. It could be words because mm -hmm. that's your medium. Yeah. That's being vulnerable. Yeah. Right? Yeah, totally. So if you take all of that into context, then vulnerability is a superpower. Yeah. It's how you show the world who you, who you are. Yeah. When we chatted earlier, I was telling you about, like, I used to dress down everywhere I went because I was like, I just didn't want to attract any kind of attention. Mm -hmm. And like, I think at that point too, I knew that I was queer to some degree, right? So I was like, oh, just, just make that not very obvious, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I had a, an experience with like this intoxicated guy in the middle of the street on like a Thursday afternoon who just didn't like the way I looked, didn't like what I was wearing, and I was wearing like the most boring, like gray t-shirt and jeans combo, but he was like, picked me out and was like, that's, I don't like that. Something about your shirt, I don't like it, you know? And mm -hmm. I was like, it was this weird moment where like, in a different situation, I think I would have taken that and been like, really frustrated by it. But for that situation, I was just like, this is so absurd. It clearly doesn't matter what I wear. 
<laughs> like, the, like jerks are gonna be jerks. <laughs> like, why mm -hmm. am I? It was this weirdly like liberating, like crappy thing that happened, where I was like, it, it genuinely doesn't seem to matter. Like, people are still gonna be jerks if they want to be, and why am I preventing myself from like wearing what I want to wear? Because, like, ultimately, I'm just making myself less comfortable. Mm hmm And, like, if someone's going to say something about it anyways, like, what difference does it make? Right. You know? Like, I'm still attracting unwanted attention. <laughs> right. But and ultimately, if you wear what you want to wear, you feel comfortable with what you're wearing, mm -hmm. you feel happy and comfortable in your own skin. Mm hmm you hold more confidence, right? You yeah. have more to give to the world, mm. to give to society, to give to your partner, mm -hmm. job, all of it, right? Mm. Because you're a happier human being, yeah. because you're living your truth. Yeah. So in a situation like that, like, would that have changed the situation? If you were wearing something where you felt more comfortable, yeah. would that person have even said anything? Did that person pick up on some anxieties or yeah, maybe, you know, yeah. Yeah. something like that? Yeah. Or is it just a person who's gonna say something? Because it can happen mm. anywhere, anytime. Totally, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, it might've just been, you know, they were drunk and were like, I'm going to harass some people on the right. street and like, but you know, I, you, you do have a, a point though. Cause like, I do find that where at first I was like nervous to start wearing like more like female clothing mm -hmm. or, or like put my hair up or like even grow my hair out or piercings or whatever. Um, like I was nervous about like, Oh man, what's, what are people going to think? How are people going to react? Am I going to attract more unwanted attention? That kind of a thing. Um, and like, I mean, I, I'm not going to say that I don't ever think about that, but I am generally just feeling like passively more confident, like without really trying. And therefore I don't always think about it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, you know, if something does happen, I'll be like, oh, right, yeah, okay. Like, <laughs> get out of my own little bubble here for a sec, right? There's, like, bigots. But, right. um, yeah, it's not... I'm not getting less comfortable as I explore these things about my gender. I'm actually... It's the opposite. I'm getting more comfortable mm -hmm. and more confident inherently through that. So, like, even though... And a better version of yourself. Yeah. More authentic, for sure. Right. Yeah. More real. Yeah. I'm definitely living my more authentic self. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I'm a happier, better person than I was before. And stronger person. Yeah. Honestly, I'm just living a more honest life. So... I have this theory, especially with relationships. Yeah. And when I say relationships, I mean all relationships. This is a relationship. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, every interaction is more or less a relationship, mm -hmm. especially if they're more than one type of interaction, right. same people. Yeah. Deeper relationships, bigger mm -hmm. relationships, smaller, like, right? Yeah. Um, so, everyone has a relationship with themselves. Now, my theory is, in all relationships, if both parties have open, honest communication, it's a better relationship. Right? Yeah. Even if you think of romantic relationships, the good ones, the failures, stuff like that, the failure ones, you can almost always pinpoint back to a breakdown of communication. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So does that mean the good ones just have a better form of communication where you're able to communicate better? Mm. In my 
experience? And my theory is yes, 100%. Yeah. So now I'm being honest with myself, mm. right? I'm living more honestly within myself. So my relationship with my own self is more honest. So I'm talking to myself more. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, the whole thing be like, you know, I'm talking to myself. You're like, well, don't answer yourself. Well, maybe sometimes you need to. Yeah. And you need to answer honestly. Yeah. 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 So the second I started living more honestly with my own self, more mm -hmm. authentic, mm -hmm. everything kind of just came into place. All the pieces were in view and I can be like, oh, that one goes here. Okay. Oh, goes yeah, 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 yeah. Right? It yeah. didn't all just happen all at once. Like, mm -hmm. it's definitely a process, but... Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I feel like I'm... And I, I think, like, this project was also kind of a catalyst for this. Was I, I feel like I'm getting to that, like, pivotal point where I'm able to be more honest with myself. Um, and, like, I mean, my gender discovery and stuff has been like tricky um i mean they it's it's a challenge mm -hmm. uh, i'm not gonna lie but like yeah I, I think one of the big things that has been holding me back is just like not being able to be honest with myself because i'm worried about what that means you know right um but i do like genuinely feel like i'm very close to just being like yeah, this is it. <laughs> Doubts yeah. are what make us human. Yeah. Right? And it's not, uh, it's not something that trans people or queer people hold exclusively. Because yeah. it's not. Yeah, just like tough conversations. Exactly. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I mean, I remember lots, even before I had my bottom surgery, like a lot of people were asking, like, you know, do you have any doubts? Do you, mm. are you second guessing it yeah. or anything like that? Yeah. Right? The big one was like, do you have any doubts? And like, of course I have doubts. It's a big procedure. Right. If I didn't have any doubts, I would like, not only should I be worried, although I wouldn't be because I wouldn't have any doubts, but That's true. <laughs> if I didn't have any doubts, I don't even know if the doctors would have signed off on the surgery. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Cause it doesn't, it doesn't it shows show that you're thinking it through and exactly. like really considering it. Right? And the weight of what it is. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If you were just like, yeah, do it. Right. They might think that it you're you're not considering the options. Right. It's it's like I mean, that's no different than saying me like whatever it needs to get done. I don't care how it gets done, just do it. Mm. Right? Yeah. Like, I don't care what it costs. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's a want. That's not a need. Yeah. Totally. Right? Yeah, yeah, and at yeah. the end of the day, it was a need. It wasn't a want. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been a delight. Um, you've given me a ton to think about. <laughs> you blew my mind a couple of times. This <laughs> was fantastic. So thank you so much. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> and I've enjoyed it. Awesome. Yeah. I'm glad you have. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. Awesome. Thank you so much. You did great. <laughs>